user are on a raft. They are very happy. I am very happy. Me too! There is no danger in sight. But then, a pirate ship appears from behind the fog. It is the ship of Dr. Devious. I wasn't aware that Dr. Devious had a pirate ship. That's because you didn't know that Dr. Devious is secretly a pirate. <laughs> I am secretly a pirate. Oh, I didn't know it was a secret. Not from you, you nincompoop. You are on the crew. Hey, boss, look over there. Ah, easy prey. After them. Ah, checkers, they are coming after us. Looks that way. What do we do? Stay the course. In fact, speed up. Are you bonkers? Just do it. I've got an idea. They're headed right for us. Fast. They must have gone mad. I guess they want to get this over with. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Checkers, what are you doing? Where is it? Huh, there it is. Little balloon. Big balloon. That's enough, snoozer. Swing around. Now what? On my signal, inflate. On my signal, the claw. <laughs> now, now. <laughs> In Checkers and Snoozer escape, Doctor Devious. The end. Well, Snoozer, that was quite a story. It's nice to see the expander come in handy every now and then. Little balloon, big balloon. Snoozer, why did you give Dr. Devious a pirate ship? I am in a pirate mood lately. And like a boat mood. Ship? Yeah, but I like saying boat better. I'm pretty sure they're different things, Snoozer. No way. All this time I've been saying boat when I probably meant ship. And vice versa. You know what vice versa means, but you don't know the difference between a boat and a ship? This is a tragedy. This is an outrage. All right, Snoozer, get a grip. Now, this is a very serious situation, but it has an easy solution. You just have to learn a little bit more about boats and ships today. Oh, yes, yes, I think I should. Yes, Snoozer, and you will do just that on today's Reading Road Trip. Seatbelts. Check. Backpack? Check, check. Recording? Testing! Recording! All right. Ascending in three, two, one. So what is the difference between a boat and a ship? Well, for such a simple question like that, Snoozer, we would call upon our friend Zot the Robot to answer. But there is positively more for you to learn about boats and oceans today, and for a more thorough and extensive study, we'll need to go somewhere to visit. But what's the difference? Zot. Zot the Robot. <laughs> A boat is a small to mid-sized vessel, which has a much lesser cargo-carrying capability as compared to a ship. Ships are specifically made to carry cargo, passengers, or boats, whereas boat is a generic term used for a variety of watercraft. Mainly boats are used for recreational purposes, fishing, or ferrying people. Oh, there it is. Oh, so boats are just smaller, and boats are more for fun stuff, like going fast and fishing. It appears so. 
Wowee! Well, now I'm really excited to go see what we're going to see and where we're seeing the things that we're going to see. What is it, by the way? The thing we're going to see or the place we're going to go to see the thing we're going to see? Both? Hint number one. It's outside. Hint number two. It's 311 feet long. Hint number three. When it was used, it would be underwater. Oh, you lost me. I thought I knew it, but now you lost me. Snoozer, it is a submarine. Specifically, the USS Croker, SS-246, a decommissioned Gato-class submarine that served in World War II. Today, you can go inside the submarine and see what it was like to be part of an 80-man crew. Fuzzles, we are in a submarine! There are 80 of us! Are you ready to begin our journey? Yes! Auto pilot activated. No further action required. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Who wants to play werewolf? This is the greatest day of my life. Okay, let me just pull up the map. We are headed for Rainbow Way. Once we cross through, it will take us right to our destination, Naval and Military Park. Along the way, Mrs. Hamilton will be showing you how to make a boat craft from her treehouse. Ooh la la! Can this day get any better? Snoozer, here come the books. Yes, it can. Let's check out a few. What did we get? Here you go, Snoozer. Float by Daniel Myers. And the Pirates Are Coming by John Condon. Excellent, Snoozer. Well, I think it's about time for a closer look. Entering in three, two, one. That's correct. This book is free of any words. It's unique in that way, and it has to tell its story entirely through pictures. Which is just fine, because this book is full of glorious illustrations. But how do I know what is happening if there are no words? Look here. The boy is building a paper boat with an adult and taking it outside. And then he enters a wonderland of imagination as he sails his boat down the rainy street. Wow! Look at it go! What? Yes, a fun book to follow, and it's communicated without a single word, just through the expressions of the boy's face. Happy? Sad? Excited! All taking us to an exciting conclusion. But what is the conclusion? That's not to be revealed until you read it later. Book two is all about pirates. The pirates are coming. Pirates! Now that's what I'm talking about. That's right. This story shows a boy looking out for pirates and shouting down to the villagers that they are coming. And they hide! Yes, but at first, the boy was wrong. Uh -oh. And each time the boy is wrong, the villagers believe him less. Oh, it was actually just a rusty old steamboat. That's an honest mistake. Yes, but eventually they don't believe him. And one day it really is pirates. Ah! Really? What happened? I had to cut us out, Snoozer. I didn't want to ruin the ending. But I will tell you, it's a bit like the boy who cried wolf. What's that? It's basically when you tell somebody something wrong over and over again, or maybe you're playing a joke on them, and then when that something actually happens, nobody believes you. 
parents come and nobody believes the boy? All right, I will tell you, there's a bit of a twist on the ending, but don't worry, Snoozer. It's not even a little bit scary, okay? Yippee! All right, Snoozer. Let's head off to Mrs. Hamilton's class. Hi, boys and girls. Would you like to do the Mrs. Hamilton craft just like me? Guess what? You can! Head to your local library for all the materials that we use in the craft. Plus, we have activity sheets, games, and a whole lot more. Your library might even have their very own snoozer. Come and see me. Anyway, back to the show. Are we there yet? Yes. Snoozer, I've been waiting for you. Oh, hi, Mrs. Hamilton. How are you? I'm great. Are we doing a craft today? We are. Today we are making a pirate ship, and these are the sheets you need. I've got those too. Perfect. All right. Well, the first step is to cut out all the pieces. So why don't we get started? where I think they should go. And then it's time to put them on. I think I'm set. Are you? Yes, let's do it. All right, I think I'll start with the windows. I think I'm finished. I'm ready for the big reveal. This is what my pirate ship looks like. How does yours look, Snoozer? I changed it a lot. Mine is Snoozer colored. It is red and yellow. How do you like it? It's just amazing. And I like how you made it just your own. Thank you, Mrs. Hamilton. Well, I guess I'll see you next time, all right? Yes, goodbye. Bye. And then I thought, this boat should be snoozer colored. Because I am snoozer, and I like my colors. So I made it yellow and red. And this in the middle is my trunk. That is quality craftsmanship, snoozer. Thank you. I may play with this with my toys. It is perfect. I must interrupt you, snoozer. We've reached a pivotal point in our journey. We are at Rainbow Way. Brace for impact. Oh, gosh. See you on the other side. Okay, snoozer. Going through the rainbow. All right, we're here. Excellent. Let's go! I am ready for some action! This anchor is huge! Alright, Snoozer, we are here at the USS Croker. Now let's go meet with Shane Stevenson. He is the Director of Museum Collections. We're going on! Yay! Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Shane Stevenson, and I'm the uh, Curator and Director of Museum Collections. Okay. So, so what does that entail? What do you do for part of your job? Part of my job is to organize, arrange, and describe all of the artifacts that we have on board the ships, uh, our three tourable vessels, and also uh, the artifacts in the ships themselves, because they're our largest artifacts. 
Yeah, so, so we're on right now the submarine, and what's the official name? The official name is USS Croker. Very strange name, you know, but they're all of the, sh all of the submarines that were uh, built for World War II are named after wildlife or marine life and fish. This submarine was in service from 1944 uh, all the way up until 1971. So she's uh, 306 feet long. Uh, so she would be able to go as deep as she is as long. Now, submarines like this could go, if they needed to, to 400, 450 feet, but they wouldn't want to do that for very long. Wowie! This submarine is big. Mr. Stevenson, how many people did it take to make this work? Hey, Snoozer, how are you? Great! And that's a great question. Thank you so very much. Uh, so while the ship was in service, we would have about 75 to 80 five guys who would be on board uh, at any given time during her service to uh, America. And was there like a captain who was in charge of it? Yes, there there was a captain who was the commanding officer mm -hmm. and he would have the executive officer that would be his second in command and then four or five other officers and then, uh, then they would have all the enlisted crew that would actually be uh, following the orders and doing what the captain and EXO asked them to do. All right, so what we have here is we have the bridge and the conning tower from her 1953 refit. So this would not have looked this way in World War II, but uh, we have the bridge there that's an open bridge, so people would be standing right above those windows you see. And then, of course, all of the periscopes and antennas would come out of the conning tower uh, towards the top. Let's go inside! This is so cool! Thanks to Shane, we now know a lot more about the ship. There were very many jobs and everyone on the crew had to be knowledgeable about the submarine and its parts because they may need to take over somebody else's job at any point. Here are the living areas and meeting spaces of the commanding officers. They were in charge of the entire crew. This submarine is not easy to control, so everyone had to do their job as a unified team for it to work. It isn't very spacey in here. No, everything is spaced tightly, very compact. Hey, it's a little ship! These are two models to illustrate how the submarine has changed over time, and it shows how large it is. There are small compact rooms, but there are a lot of them. Living on this ship would be very difficult, but those who did sail are very proud of their service. Some of them even come back to this day to remember their time on the Croker. Zot the Robot at your service. These are today's book selections. Never Mess with a Pirate Princess by Holly Ryan. Who Sank the Boat by Pamela Allen. Titanic by Stuart Melissa. Boats and Ships for Kids. A children's picture book about boats and ships by Melissa Ackerman. The Pirates Are Coming by John Condon. Float by Daniel Myers. That is all for now. Goodbye. All right, snoozer. Maiden Voyage. Here goes. Wait! What's that? Oh. I installed a new motor on the snoozer ship. This is about to become the fastest ship in all of Fuzzland. And probably the world. Though that's not verifiable in a timely fashion. Okay, ready, set, go! Was that intentional? Did I miscalculate? Yes. Oh dear, my poor boat! Looks like it's okay, snoozer. I think the motor just blew up. In the meantime, I guess you'll just have to make that boat go fast in your imagination. But hey, let's get that file over to the Fuzzleland School so they can learn all about ships and boats too. Okay, snoozer. Until next time. <laughs>